Let's take a look at what we're going to build in this episode. In the last episode, we set up two tools to either retrieve an existing customer profile or to create a new customer profile and update the customer's database. Now that we're assuming the chatbot has those customer details, we want to be able to do something with them. And so we're going to create tools that will place a new order and retrieve an existing order. Both using another pretend database, the orders database. In addition, we want to be able to update the inventory when an order happens. So we're also going to update our pretend inventories database. That's what we're planning on building. What does the finished product look like? So say I want a bouquet for an anniversary. It's gone away, done something with the knowledge base and got some recommendations back. Perfect for anniversaries or Valentine's Day. Okay, that sounds quite good. Can I order three of number one? lucky lady so let's say yes i have a profile and then we're going to try and retrieve one of these existing profiles from the database uh, let's go with john doe 01 1990. there we go it's done a dpa check and passed with the correct details it's then gone away and performed an order and informed us that the order has been successfully placed right let's get started First, we're going to need a pretend orders database. So, order database. And to save me typing it out, here's some example orders. So, we've got an order ID, the customer ID that order is associated with, the status of the order, and the items in the order. Now, we're going to need the two tools that we talked about to be able to manage these orders. We're going to want to retrieve an existing order. Let's say existing customer orders. We just want to condition the chatbot a little bit more to know that it needs to know about the customer first. And here we're going to request the customer ID, which means if the chatbot is going to retrieve an order, it has to have done our data protection or already created a new customer profile. Either way, we have all the customer details we need. So let's create our helpful doc string again. It's the status of all orders associated with the customer. Retrieves just the orders associated with the customer, including their status, items, and IDs. Args. All we've got is our customer ID, customer unique ID associated. With the order it's going to return a list of dictionaries you can specify returns list dictionaries and this will be all the orders associated with the customer id passed in so now we want to get all the customer orders is equal to order for orders in orders database if order customer id is equal to the customer id that's been passed in order there we go and then if this is empty so if not customer orders then we want to return a message to the chatbot saying no orders associated with this customer id and let's specify the customer id in case the language model has made a mistake Otherwise, we can return all of our customer orders. Now we only needed one more tool, which is to place an order. We're gonna to need to pass in the items, which will be a dictionary of the item IDs and the quantity of those items that we're gonna order. So let's specify that here. It's a string and an integer as the values with the quantity. And we're gonna to need to know the customer ID for the order, which is a string, and we're gonna return a string back. One more helpful doc string places an order for the requested items and for the required quantities. Arguments, as always, the items, which is a dict of string, keys, and integer values. We're being specific and specifying that the item ID is the key and the quantity is the value, and specifying that this is the customer. 
to place the order for. And it's going to return a message indicating that the order has either been placed or it hasn't been placed due to an issue. There we go. Now, what are we going to have to do within this function? We're going to have to, to start off with check that the item IDs are valid. We're going to have to check that the quantities of items are valid. We're going to want to place the order in our pretend database and we're going to want to then update the inventory so that the new quantity is representative of what's actually in stock. Right, now we need to first check the item IDs are valid and that the quantities are valid. I think we can probably do these at the same time actually. As we're iterating through the list, let's put together a list of messages to indicate if any of the items are not in stock. So for item ID and the requested quantity in items. So if the item is not in a list of valid item IDs, we'll fill this in in a second. We can specify item with ID is not found in the inventory. Otherwise, if it has been found, we then need to check the remaining quantity. So I think now is a good time to load in our inventory so we can access it to get our valid item IDs and also to check the available quantity. So let's load in our inventory at the top because we've already got a file which represents our, in our inventory in JSON. So let's just open that. Open inventory.json as f. Our inventory database is equal to json.load f. And we're going to need to import JSON as well. Now we can specify what our valid item IDs are, which are item ID, I believe is what we need. Yep, ID for item in inventory database. There we go, that's our valid item IDs. And now if the item is in there, we need to check that there is the quantity of that item is available. So the quantity is just quantity. So now let's get the inventory item. And we're going to get this by item for item in inventory database. If the ID of item, because we know that there is one, is equal to our ID. And we're going to get just the first item because we're assuming that this is a unique key. Now that we've got our inventory item, let's check that the quantity is suitable. If quantity is greater than the item quantity, then we need to append another message to our availability message stating that there is insufficient quantity in the inventory. Let's specify what quantity there is available. This item with a specific name. There are this many available. Let's put a new line here. Make it a bit more readable for the language model. There are this many available. Another new line, and we've requested quantity of them. What have we put? There is insufficient quantity in the inventory for this item with that name. There, the number available is the amount in the inventory. The amount we've requested is the quantity from here. What's this? Item ID not in. There we go. So now we've sorted out making sure that everything's available, we need to break out of this function here if there's any availability issues. So if availability messages return, and let's just wrap things up with a summary message. Order cannot be placed due to the following issues. Again, another new line. And now let's combine with a new line character all those availability messages. There we go. So now the language model should know all of the issues with our current inventory. I think I've been using the same inside quotes as outside quotes. Let's swap that around and we're going to have the same issue here. Great. So now we've dealt with the order to make sure that there's sufficient availability of the items and that these are valid items that we currently hold. The next step is to place the order. So let's do that. So our orders database dot append and we're going to need order ID, customer ID, status and items. We haven't actually included the quantity of these items here. So let's go and add that in quantity. There we go. So we're going to, what do we need? An order ID, a customer ID, a items and the quantity. Let's double check that. Order ID, customer ID, status items and quantity. So we're just missing the status. So our order ID is going to be the current number of orders, plus one. Our customer ID is going to be the passed in customer ID. 
the status is going to be waiting for payment because we're assuming in this situation they receive a payment link in their email. The items in the quantity are going to be our dictionary that's been unpacked. Items.keys and our items.values. And lastly, we need to update our inventory pretend database with the new quantity. So let's loop over for item quantity for item ID quantity in items dot items. Let's get the inventory item and that's going to be the same thing that we've done up here. And now we just need to update the quantity. Finally, assuming everything's been a success, we need to tell the customer the good news. Well, through the chatbot. So let's say order with ID the customer will want to know the order ID. So actually we need to extract this order ID from here. Let's get rid of that order ID and create it in advance. The order with order ID has been placed successfully. Great, so those are our two functions, retrieving an order and placing a new order. Now we need to tell our chatbot about them. So we're going to need to import these, place order and retrieve existing customer orders, place order, retrieve existing customer orders. And now we need to also update our main prompt to give it some instructions about when it should place an order. So really this retrieving of customer profiles, this is only so that we can place an order. So actually we want to start off with help the customer check on an existing order or place a new order. Then afterwards we can specify about to place and manage orders. You will need a customer profile with an associated ID. I think that should be enough for the chatbot to work out what it's got to do. It's got to help the user in general with products help them check on an existing order or place a new order. And it's got to place a manage order. And to do that, it's got to have a customer profile. Let's try with a whole end to end customer journey. So let's assume that they are a new customer and want to place a new order for some bouquets, but they don't know what they want. So let's just start with saying, I need to order some flowers for my mum's birthday. I'm not sure what she likes. So now it's returned some recommendations. I quite like this classic carnation cluster. So can I order the classic carnation? No, I don't. So let's go with Will White, date of birth 0101 2000, postcode ER455RD, first line of the address, one the street, phone number, there we go, and email address www.gmail.com. So actually what's happened here is it's create the, created the customer profile. It's then tried to place the order, but there was an issue with it placing it. The chatbot has realized that it's made a mistake and then had another go and been able to place it successfully. So although it had an issue with formatting the input that are placing the order correctly, it was still able to do it after some correction and then it's placed it and the user knows no different. Now, I just want to sort out this issue with the orders not being placed properly. There's a minor issue where when you place an order, it doesn't get the arguments right first time. So to sort this issue, I'm going to tell it an example of what the items input should look like. So let's just do that. And now it'll be much easier for the chatbot to get it right the first time. I've also added on a bit to this placing and managing orders where we can say you cannot place an order until you have the item ID from a product search and the customer ID. So that'll mean it only performs the product search when it's got everything it needs. Now that we've sourced out that issue, let's try again creating a new customer profile and placing a new order. So I'd like to place an order. I need a new profile. So first name will Thomas. Date of birth 01 1990. A very real postcode that's definitely mine. One the street, a phone number, and lastly an email address. Great, so it's created us a customer profile. 
And now it's asking what I'd like. So there are some carnations. Perfect. I have two of those. And there we go. It's placed our order and sent us a message confirming that it's been placed. Now let's try again and use our DPA. Now let's try again and test out performing a DPA check, a data protection check. We're going to try and retrieve the customer profile that we've just created and then place a follow-up order. So I'd like to place a new, a second order. Full name, Will Thomas, date of birth, 01, 01 1990, and postcode was ER455RE. Then it's retrieved our profile successfully, DPA check passed, and confirmed our details to us. Let's check the status of our existing order. What's the state of my order? And then it's gone away, retrieved our order, and confirmed to us that it's still waiting for payment. Excellent. So let's create a new order for some sunflowers. Lovely. Vibrant sunflower surprise. Two bouquets of vibrant sunflower surprise. And there we go, it's placed us another order. You can confirm the order ID, the price of each item, and that it's been successfully placed. And it's given us another very mediocre pun, sensational news. And there we have it. In this episode, we wrapped up our flower shop customer service assistant by adding the ability to place and retrieve customer orders and tied it all together with a full customer journey getting some recommendations for products, placing the order, and then retrieving that new order that we've just placed. I hope you've enjoyed this series. If I hope you've enjoyed this series. If you enjoy this content and want to see more relating to AI agents or relating to Landgraph, then please leave a comment. And lastly, please like and subscribe as it'll motivate me to do more of these videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.